inflation, recession, two polar opposites, yet they are currently wiping the economy clean. Welcome to Finance Simple, where money is made easy, and we'll discuss the possible upcoming hyperinflation and recession in the economy. Interest rates are rising. The stock market has seen its worst first half in more than 50 years. Prices for necessities are stubbornly climbing. Government assistance programs intended to aid citizens in coping with the pandemic are swiftly being cancelled. Most of the population's financial situations are riskier now than they were during the pandemic's peak. What's wrong? Let's find out. The U.S. currently has an annualized inflation rate of 8.6%, reaching unreasonable territory. It is actually three to four times higher than the Fed's target rate. Growth, on another hand, has also been quite modest. A negative GDP in the first and second quarter, along with forecasts calling for another sluggish quarter ahead. A recession is technically defined as two consecutive quarters of negative real GDP growth. However, most institutions no longer apply that strict framework to determine whether or not an economy is going through a recession. Yet, most economies around the world are most probably already there. Apart from this, there is actually a third option after high inflation or a recession, but it may not be what you were expecting. The word stagflation was initially used in the 1970s to refer to a time of low economic growth, high unemployment, and yet high inflation. Low growth and high unemployment typically lowers inflation because individuals won't spend as much money if they don't have work and are worried about the future. As long as there is less overall demand in the economy due to lower consumer spending, prices will decline. The exact opposite of inflation is lower pricing. The current rate of inflation is at 8.5%, despite the target being 2-3% to annually. The 3% which were caused by stimulus efforts represent half of the problem. The real calculations are, of course, much more intricate than this. The Fed has even acknowledged that this 3% figure is likely to be revised upward. But for the time being, it provides a respectable baseline to use. So what's responsible for the additional 3% inflation? Certainly, there are challenges with the supply chain. There is no getting around the fact that during the past 2.5 years, the way business is conducted to generate value to the economy has fundamentally changed. But why is it only happening now? Industrial output has even increased to record levels in the U.S. This is while a surge in imports has helped to more than make up for supply shortfalls. Supply chains were a significant contributor to the inflationary issue a few months ago. There is now a little bit more to it, though. Of course, there are still some products that are troublesome, such as consumer electronics, food, and oil, and many of these have had negative ripple effects. Paul Donovan is UBS Global Wealth Management's head economist. He pointed out in a recent interview that only 15-20% to 20 of the money spent on food is spent on actual food. The remaining 80% has been used to transport the food from the farm to supermarkets. This is largely made up of transportation costs. The increase in petroleum costs, coupled with rising costs for packaging and processing, which have become slightly less efficient due to the pandemic restrictions. This has given businesses a chance to boost their prices while claiming to be merely keeping up with inflation. In truth, most businesses have raised their prices excessively either out of concern for continued inflation or, more likely, because they can. People won't be surprised if the price of their goods and services rises if they are anticipating a rise in the price level of such goods and services. You get it? Corporate earnings have reached records over the past six months. This is despite the gradual tapering off of several fiscal stimulus measures because these businesses may now charge whatever they want. At the time, unemployment is quite low and fewer people are opting to work at all. Given the constant mention of inflation, this means that workers have more negotiation power to demand higher wages. Higher interest rates will have a negative impact on consumer and business activity. This will make companies and employees less confident in demanding record profits and pay raises. Apparently, the government's rhetoric is one of its most effective weapons against this kind of inflation. If they insist repeatedly that inflation is now their top priority, it can be expected that this problem won't persist long. As a result, people will be less inclined to engage in behaviors that cause inflation in the first place. Yet, they still need to exercise extreme caution 
in the event that the economy enters a recession, the Fed may very well need to abruptly change its strategy. People won't listen to them anymore if they act contrary to what they promised. When inflation is out of control in an economy, the central bank raises interest rates and cuts spending while increasing taxes. What about a recession? The central bank reduces interest rates and increases government spending while lowering taxes. What should be done when inflation is high and the economy is still on the verge of a recession? In actuality, a compromise of some sort is the solution. The primary goal of the Federal Reserve Bank is price stability. While they typically strive to strike a balance between that and encouraging economic growth, if they find themselves in a tight spot, they will choose to maintain price levels. This is even if doing so means the economy may enter a recession. When you consider that these activities will have genuine effects on millions of everyday people around the world, it sounds somewhat cruel. Even the most severe recessions can be overcome. Hyperinflation recovery can actually be harder. With all of the issues facing the world right now, the Fed would never consider hiking interest rates, but they continue to do it due to inflation. However, unlike the Fed, the government doesn't have a specific mission. It simply exists for the benefit of the people it represents, so its response will be quite different. The White House has already declared that controlling inflation is its top economic goal. Although, they will not obstruct the Federal Reserve's effort to ease the inflation, despite the fact that it recognizes that doing so could hinder the economy's recovery. The government is instead working to implement fresh stimulus programs to lessen the effects of inflation and the looming recession. We have seen how that floods the market with printed money that only kicks the can further down the road. We can't keep printing money and ignoring the real issues, can we? This new stimulus plan focuses on expanding infrastructure, unlocking oil reserves, and increasing home construction. These actions will enhance the economy's supply of goods and services, which should hopefully both attenuate growing prices and simultaneously give some economic stimulus. Due to the continued strength of the labor market, at least some people continue to earn money. Yes, the stock market is having a terrible year, but perhaps that is for the best. The majority of the value that has been lost in the main indices has come from undoubtedly overpaid tech businesses. Since borrowing rates were cheap, consumers could risk on the firms that might revolutionize the world in the decades to come. This is rather than invest in dependable organizations that were already creating value. Most of what has driven the value of the entire stock market down is the decline in the value of these ID companies. Many of the largest, more established businesses are even having a real successful year. As there is a high correlation between the two asset groups, housing prices are expected to see a similar decrease. But that isn't always a terrible thing for the economy as a whole. More often than not, the most economic downturns in history came as complete surprise. Always stay focused on learning and developing discipline. Get educated, make a plan, and stay the course. If you found this informative, smash the like button. Please share it with a friend, comment down below, and let us know what would you like to have made Finance Simple next. And definitely subscribe so you don't miss new content. Keep your head up, ears open, and always search for knowledge. See you soon.